forward. Let's see. We're going to share. There we go. There we go. So I can still see your beautiful faces on the side. There we go. All right. Miss Jennifer. Miss Jennifer, where'd you go? Let's see. I'm still here. Okay, beautiful. Okay, beautiful. There you go. I see a little still photo with your cute self. <laughs> All right. So we got everything logged in and shared. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Just from my soul ministry says good morning to you. Some of you were able to be dry and some of you got a little wet. You all have been in our prayers. I want you to know that. Um, praying through the night for those who had to deal with, with Laura. Um, but I thank you for being with us this morning. So we are going to get started in our book study. We are in chapter two of our book, Fervent. Um, but I thank you for being with us this morning. So we are going to get started. Okay, there's an echo. We are Sorry, that's me. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Turn our phones down. All right. So as I welcome you to Just For My Soul Ministries, I am Reverend Cheryl Oliver, and I'm going to introduce this awesome panel of ladies to you in just a moment. And I want to introduce um, who Just For My Soul Ministries is. Um, it's a discipleship ministry. The vision for Just For My Soul, as God gave, was peace and purpose for the soul through truth, love, and relationship. Our mission to love and to serve everyone through biblical teaching, personal testimonies, prayer, and mentoring for the glory of God. That's who we are. Simple, straight, right to the point. Opportunities to grow in your relationship with Christ. On Wednesdays, we have prayer moments, um, which includes a Bible study um, in the form of a devotion. <laughs> Sometimes it turns out to be a full-blown Bible study, 5.30 a.m. and again at 9 p.m. Sometimes it's the same lesson. Sometimes it's not. You have the access code and the phone number. The 5.30 a.m. session is Facebook Live, um, so you can join us on your telephone. Also, we have monthly teaching sessions every second Saturday at 9.30 a.m. And the third opportunity for you to grow in Christ is what we're doing right now, this awesome book study that God laid on a few of our hearts, and we just said, hey, let's do it. We called a few powerful sisters, and they j jumped right in on the opportunity to have this book study. So we may be in four walls. We may be closed in a little bit as we're trying to stay safe and healthy, but it does not stop us loving God and God loving us. So we keep our relationship going. There's just for my soul's contact information on your screen as well. Phone number, email, website. Um, if you miss any of these opportunities to grow, no worries. We have a YouTube channel where you can go in you can click on playlist and you can go under either of those three opportunities, prayers, um, monthly sessions, or the book study. And you can view any of them at your leisure and also our website. You go under teachings and you have the same three categories. Amen. 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 You are always able to spend some time with Christ. And that's our goal. This morning, we have with us on the line, Minister Linda Hewlett. M Linda, say hey. There she is. It's Jennifer. She got the beautiful still picture. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Minister Jennifer. First Lady Shalita. Good morning, everybody. And Miss First Lady Tanae. Good morning. There she is, Miss Tenille. Good morning. Beautiful sister. And you got little old me. <laughs> <laughs> you got little old me. We have um, 
our book study, which we're going to get into, and then we're going to do a call to prayer as we look at how to focus in on the topic this morning, the second strategy in strategic prayer, this beautiful book by Priscilla Schreier, the second strategy, your focus. The first was passion, and the second is your focus. So you just open your books up to chapter two if you have a copy. Right in the beginning, she starts the chapters, if I were your enemy. If I were your enemy. Um, and she just lays it right out there. She just lays it right out there. Manipulate your perspective. If I was your enemy, cause you to fight the most obvious source cause you to destroy relationships in the process, make you waste good energy. Mm. See, you know, when your, your mama used to say, turn on the good light, go get my good glasses. <laughs> the older you get, you start wasting that good energy. <laughs> you don't have no time to do that. Um, seek to keep you focused on symptoms instead of the source keep you focused on a symptom instead of the true source. And I love the way she starts each chapter like that because it actually helps you see what she's about to talk about. It actually helps you see what the enemy's game plan is. She's very strategic in how she opens up each of these chapters. Um, so fighting the real enemy. Take time and soak that in on page 39. Okay, so we got some guided questions as always. Um, and I'm going to read these questions and then I'm going to pose them to our, our panel. Um, we're going to look at pages 39 through 44. I'll try my best because the chapters are not long to break them up into two halves. Um, I don't think I've read any chapter that warrants three sections. Um, so the most part, we'll try to keep the chapters, the book chapters in two halves. And Miss Linda, um, Sister Shalita, and Sister Tanil wanted to take a stab at their views and uh, their thoughts on pages 39 through 44. And the questions are, and ladies, you can just kind of tell me which question you're speaking from, but I'm going to put them all out there on the table. What did the author, I'm sorry, how did the author describe focus? Okay, what causes our focus to be off? What are we doing if we're not focused on the real issue? Where is the struggle, the real struggle? Where is the real fight? Okay. Those are a few guided questions. And so panel have, have, have edit number one, what you got? Um, I can start off with no one else. I'll try to anyway. Um, I, I love, um, I love how she gave several descriptions um, of focus. Yes. And they all really stood out for me. Um, I had something to say about all of them, but one, the one I'm, I'm looking at right now is where she says, focus minimizes distractions, mm -hmm. um, lowering your risk of being blindsided. And so for me, I think the only, I know the only way that we can have that kind of focus, that, that non-blurred uh, focus is to focus on the spiritual things and to focus on God. Mm -hmm. That's the only way that we can do that. And then, you know, um, in my notes, um, I put that you sometimes can be a person who's been saved all their life and really not have that focus. Mm -hmm. Really not have that focus. And then that's when blind, you know, the blind side you know, we get blindsided by the enemy, and then we're like, what, what happened? So that's what stuck, stuck out for me, the distractions. Yes, yes. Um, I agree with Sister Linda. I mean, she, she did a great job on um, 
yeah. what what focus is all about and giving different um, examples of focus. A um, couple of couple of words that caught my attention because I like the way she related the word focus to practical things in our lives. Mm -hmm. And um, she said it's what sharpens the images. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, whenever we're taking pictures, my my husband has this real fancy camera, and whenever we're taking pictures or at events, I I can always let me make sure it's focused. Make sure it's focused. Meaning, you know, he, we want to make sure we see all the details and highlights that you really want to remember. Um, sharpening yeah. our focus helps to keep us from being preoccupied and That's to pay right. better attention. And then on the next page, on page 40, and I put a big star by this, um, this example, when she says, and focus is the antenna yeah. that prayer yeah. helps to keep raised and alert, mm -hmm. making you keenly aware if somebody's trying to play you for a fool. That's right. So, you know, when I thought about, you know, focus is the antenna, mm -hmm. what is an antenna? Um, it's the faculty. It's mm -hmm. what we have that instinctively detects and interprets those subtle signs. Yes. Those subtle signs yes. from the enemy that raises when our antenna is raised. Mm -hmm. um, when, when your eyebrow goes up and you kind of go, hmm, that's, that's our antenna. Amen. And our antenna is that prayer that helps to keep ra you raised and keep you alert. Amen, amen. Beautiful, beautiful, amen. Amen. I think for me, what stuck, what stuck out the most um, in uh, her defining focus, I like to go through and pull out those words that jump out. For me, um, it talked about focus clears, mm. focus minimizes, mm -hmm. focus protects, yeah. focus makes you clean, keenly aware yeah. by using that antenna. And the biggest thing is that focus is the foundation of what fervent prayer relies on. If Satan can steal our focus, then we cannot even move on to using the rest of the strategies. So clearing out that, clearing out that dead space and minimizing the distractions and then beginning to focus and protecting your goals and your dreams, all of those um, stood out for me, but the biggest thing was the protecting the goals and the dreams. And I and wrote on the side of that, um, on page 40, uh, at the top, it says, focus protects your goals and dreams from being consumed in small bites stolen right from under your nose and 20 mi minute segments, mm -hmm. segment compromise. And I wrote, wow, losing small pieces of time. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. in the yes. end, that are logging on um, into all of these different things that we have to distract us, you think, oh, I'm just going to look into it for a few moments. In an hour or two hours, we've lost. Yeah. What have we been doing with that time to strengthen our preparing for our goals and our dreams? So Satan certainly uses all kinds of sneaky, easily devices mm -hmm. to distract us and throw our focus off. Amen. 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 And when you regain focus and you see what he's done clearly, and I'm speaking very transparently and very honestly, mm -hmm. pinpoint segments and seasons in my life, I look back and say, how could you not see that, Cheryl? Mm -hmm. how, could you, how could you not see him using your emotions, using your anger, using all of the things that's real low? Yes. Yeah. Okay, anger, emotions, selfishness, discontentment, what you want. Okay, and then when God raised you up high enough to look back and see, you be like, ah, dog, mm -hmm. could I not see that? Yeah. yeah. How could I not see that? Amen. Amen. And so, and you have to know your own life and your own self. I'm, I'm very transparent about mine. And it's not been one or two times. It's been many. Amen. 
Amen. I find myself praying and saying, God, help me. I know I have your love. I know I have your forgiveness. But Father, help me redeem the time. Yeah. Amen. Help me redeem the time that I just didn't see it. I was so distracted, whether it was anger, whether it was drama, whether it was selfishness, whether it was fleshly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you get to a clearer season. As Shalita said, you fix that camera lens. Yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. It's like I just got pumped. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and it worked for no two weeks. It was like two years. <laughs> Amen, brother. No. Amen. <laughs> Amen. What causes our focus to be off, ladies? What you got? Um. Wow. Um, <laughs> that's a loaded question ain't it that that is a loaded question especially over the last couple of days of my life um of course the obvious is always the things of the world you know that always there, there's endless distractions right. um from our faith and from keeping us focused um mm -hmm. those things that are temporary the entertainment those quick fixes that we think are going to work um, but we always have to keep in mind that God is eternal yes. and our eternal life with him, um, definitely needs to be our priority. Yeah. Um, over the last couple of days, I've been involved in year end process at work and it's been, you know, grueling and yeah. it brought me to think about, you know, time management. How we you know we want to do work, we want to make sure we get that done. Um, but we have to make sure we get things done when we need to, mm -hmm. so that we can have enough time yeah. to devote to the time that we need with God. Yes. And I think yes. I know for me, I know that sometimes some of my focus or my spiritual distractions are caused. Um, by poor time management. Yes. yes. And then in my in my research, I found something else that was interesting. Um, that as humans, we tend to be very self focused at times. We mm -hmm. get lost in all sorts of things. Yeah. So then we get to the point where we're focusing too much on ourselves and not on enough mm -hmm. on God. Um, he created us for more mm -hmm. and he created us to love him mm -hmm. but also to love and care for one another mm -hmm. you know we just recently experienced all these folks that have suffered from this storm yeah. and i i think we all have to do our part to try to care for those who may have been less fortunate than us we mm -hmm. had bright sunshiny days here in houston that's right yes. so with yeah. that we can't let ourselves be yes. a distraction or we can't allow ourselves right. um to remove our focus amen 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 um i i i agree with everything that uh first lady shalita just stated um my um answer will be coming from a i will say someone who may be straddling the fence kind mm. of with God or not in God, but know who God is and still struggle. Um, I, I put separation from God um, because we, we tend to separate mm. ourselves from him when the issues of life surface. Mm. And I can remember when I was straddling the fence and I was one of those people, uh, I asked God for forgiveness for everything but I still went and I did it. I still went and tested the waters thinking, Come on now. oh, he's going to forgive me. He going to forgive me for this. He know my heart. He know yeah. this. But all the while, the enemy was just sitting there, just okay. sitting there laughing and laughing. And that's why when I read, when she opened up with, um, um, if I were your enemy, y'all, that made me feel some kind of way. I'm sorry. I know it did. <laughs> that, that, that made me feel some kind of way. And I was like, the enemy is basically just pinging us in the chest. You know, like when you were a kid, 
you know, and that's how people would start a fight. <laughs> he just pinging us in the chest. So separation from, from God from me. Amen. Is, uh, what keeps the causes our focus to be off. Miss Linda, that was absolutely wonderful when you say we, um, we make excuses. Yeah. Uh, the Lord knows my heart, but isn't that actually one of Satan's tactics as well? For us to acknowledge God, but still go and do the thing that we... we what you say? Eye opener. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I love it. Love it. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. One, uh, a couple of things for me that causes focus to be off that the author pointed out. I love the story that she talks about how uh, the five-year-old pulls the curtain back mm -hmm. uh, with the whack-a-mole. You yeah. know, and mm -hmm. we're so focused on the moving parts. Mm -hmm. We don't see ah. the magic happening behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. We're so focused on the thing that's appealing to our eye. Amen. We, Amen. Uh, and yeah. the trauma that it's going to cause later on down the road. Mm -hmm. And so that's one thing, the temptations that's appealing to our eye um, that causes our focus to be um, off. For me, mm -hmm. Um, busyness and trying to fix everything mm. for body. Oh, yeah. Lord Jesus. Like, no, deliver us. Just deliver yeah. us. Ouch. Right now to Neil. Ouch. <laughs> yes, try to put everything in everybody's place. Trying to um, be at Shanna's basketball game and trying to do stuff for work and trying to see home health patients all at the same time and then forgetting, well, if you start your day with the Lord, if Come you on. take 30 minutes out, yeah. if you choose not to have that conversation during lunchtime with your coworker and steal away five minutes with just me to refresh yourself for the second half of the day, those are the things that Satan use small little slides mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that we think that we're doing good and it's nothing wrong with those things, but it's stealing our time that we can focus on ourselves with the Lord. So that that's the biggest thing for me. That just the five year olds like, wait, something else is happening behind the scenes. Let me see what's right. going on. Right. Mm -hmm. Take a little bit of time to investigate. And right. one other thing um, that I that I um, jot it down. You guys know I work in my yard and all of this stuff. But um, one thing that keeps our focus off is also just using the wrong tools. Yeah. <laughs> in the wrong suit. so mm -hmm. two examples one trying to hammer something in with the screwdriver the screwdriver is not going to be effective and then the other thing I love try, it. trying to use a weed eater to mow to mow an acre of grass versus yeah. using yeah. while we're going to get the grass cut it's going to take us longer yeah more distracted and we're going to burn out faster when we could just hopped on the riding lawnmower and cut it out in 30 minutes. You, I, I'm just, we just yeah. book study right now. Oh, <laughs> that's so good. That is good. It sure is. We can stop the book study right now. Praise God. Yes. yes. Amen. Every soul listening mm. said something to Daniel. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Every soul listening. Yeah, yeah. My gosh, I, I hope I hope you got that. If you missed it, just look at the tape later. Yes, yes. That's a tape. That's like 1975. <laughs> video later. <laughs> you better look at this video later. <laughs> because you get you get great deliverance when you eat to those who's already suffered. Yes. Yes, yes. And there's somebody that has been down that pathway. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Come on, y'all. Come on, ladies. Come on. So that was beautiful, my sister. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. Yes, it was. Going. If we're not focused on the real issue, what are we doing if we are not focused on the real issue? And I'll give you a hint. No, I won't. I won't. <laughs> you tell me you're not focused on the real issue. <laughs> what are we doing if we're not focused on the real issue? I'll jump in, I'll take it. 
Um, well, we're not focused on the real issue. We're focusing on everything else around us causing more damage and causing more hurt. My. Amen. The My. only we end up damaging the people around us that we need to build up in order to fight against an enemy who believes that he's stronger than us. Yeah. Mm. Right. Not stronger than us, and that's why he needs to tear down our relationships, husband and wife, daughter mm -hmm. and mother, son and father. Mm -hmm. The reason why he has to tear down those relationships, and especially when you see Satan very busy in those type of relationships, it's because mm -hmm. power exists there. And if power exists there, he has to tear it down so that we don't move to the next level. That's right. And, and, and in my situation, parent, child, I know the gifts that God has bestowed on my baby's head and Satan is trying everything possible to break down communication, oh break yeah. down ability yeah. to heal. Oh and, and most of you guys know she's at a transition point. We're, we're seniors in high school now. So if I, if Satan can steal her now, if he can break down communication now, he can prevent, at least in his mind, prevent her from getting to the place where God has her faster. He'll never stop her as long as she stays on the path. Mm -hmm. path. If he prevents it and slows it down, now we got to go all the way around to get her to the promises that God has for her. Mm -hmm. So when we focus on, oh, this child is not doing this or this child doesn't listen, all we do is tear down physical relationships. But if we focus on seeing where, where Satan is trying to break her down in her spiritual gifts, now we see where Satan is trying to hurt the relationship. That's, that's, that's. Ooh, I don't Lord. know. I, I read that. I, I only had one word that came to mind right off the top, and it was wandering. We're just wandering. When we're wandering. Not we're just yeah. wandering. We're spinning. We're moving around in a circle. We're just, we're just, we're just wandering. Mm -hmm. And and we we have to focus because My we God. have to believe that we cannot do this on our own. We are not strong enough to com to compete against that powerful enemy. We right. have to go to God. Yeah. We have to you know, plead the blood of the lamb over all our situations, mm -hmm. over our children, yes. over everything that's going on in our life, because that is what overcomes Satan. Yeah. When yeah. we when we go to God, when we pray, when we fall down, when we plead the mm -hmm. blood of Jesus over mm -hmm. anything that's going on. That is yeah. what overcomes Satan. My Amen. God, my God. Well, First Lady Shalita took my answer. <laughs> but because I love her so much, because I love her so much, and I'm talking about it was almost word for word, people. It was almost word for word. But that's the beauty of God. Community. That's the beauty of God. But I wanna I wanna tag off of Miss Tanil because earlier in the chapter where she was described in focus. And the part where she was saying that it protects your goals and dreams. Many of you know I love, I love, love children, youth. I, I, I love them. They're my hearts. And I thought about how we as parents have to be the biggest cheerleader for our children. We have to be the biggest spiritual cheerleader for our children because Sister Tania said it. The enemy is there. He did it to me. And I'm sure he stole some of y'all stuff. Y'all know he robs. Come yes. on now. Yes. So I know he stole many dreams, many goals you had set out. But it, with, it's God is my witness. And with everything he put in me, for my nieces, my great nieces, my great, great nieces and nephews, I will not allow the enemy to steal any of their dreams and their hopes and their goals. I would, I refuse because he does that, not even in 20 minute segments, like Reverend Oliver said, it's over time, 15 years are passing, you're gonna be like, I ain't finished school yet, what, what? You know, 
So he he's very crafty in mm -hmm. stealing our time, y'all. In mm -hmm. stealing our time. That's why it is so important, so important that our focus is our children's focus as well in God. That's all I have to say. And I just want to take a break right here. You guys, um, and I, I don't quite know how the comment thing is going for, for you all. I'm not that technically savvy. But what I'm seeing, I'm seeing something that was in my heart last night. Um, th there's prayer going on in the comments. Lord, help me get my focus back. Yeah. Okay. And that's the, that, that right there is the object prayer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because focus is about seeing, mm -hmm. not what your natural eye, seeing what your spiritual eye. Yeah. So the prayer, when you pray to a spiritual God, help me focus. Mm -hmm. He's going to make that spiritual eye more keen. Now you got to believe what you see. Oh, Jesus. Mm. The mm. thing that takes our focus, what are we doing if we're not focused on the real issue? You're doing what you want to do. My God. You focus on what you want to focus on. If it's your emotions, if it's, um, if you, you like control, if it's busyness, what are we doing? You're doing what you want to do. Yeah. If you're not focused, and sometimes the real issue is painful. Oh, mm. Because sometimes when you look in the mirror, you're looking at the real issue. Oh, my God. Yes. Yes. Okay? Yes, yes, yes. So yes. when we say, God, help me focus, and if he happens to start with you, yes. let him in. Amen. 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 Repent and let him in. Because some of us can look at the end result of some lost things or some things that the enemy has seemingly destroyed. And then God can show you what you need to do to stop it. That's right. You don't want to do that. That's right. That's right. You just want him to stop it. That's right. I see it, but he's saying, okay, I need you to do that. I don't want to do that. Right. Stop it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't work that way. My God. Sister Shalita say, first lady say, what are we doing if we're not focused? She says, wandering. Yeah. yeah. Wandering around in your own selfishness. Mm -hmm. Danielle said, what else are we doing? Destroying relationships? Amen. Yes, you do. Because God isn't, you're not allowing yeah. God to show you what's underneath the hell. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's just oh, what God. we can see. What we can see. And you ladies have kind of encompassed um, uh, question four as, as you have been beautifully, beautifully. And those of you, I, I want to Make sure people might be jumping over like, what are they talking about? We are in the book fervent. And these ladies are speaking. Um, now we're probably up to about page 40, 43 or so. Yes. So where's the real struggle? Where's the real fight, queens? Hmm. That's a question for y'all. <laughs> This is Jennifer. This is Jennifer. I would say I have so many bubbles. Y'all know how on the cartoons when the characters have bubbles coming out of different <laughs> ideas. So I pray that all these bubbles come together so I make sense. Mm -hmm. But the battlefield is in the mind. We know that. And yeah. I, the whole time as I was reading this chapter over and over again, God kept telling me, focus is a choice. Yes. Every day you choose to focus on me or by default you will focus on other things that are meaningless. Mm -hmm. And so with that being said, just like a, uh, someone gets ready to go to, into battle and they put on the armor, and I know that's coming up later, so I won't go there. But every night when they go to bed, they take that armor off. So in the morning, that focus becomes the fact that we have to deny ourselves, take up our crosses, follow after him, and put that armor back on Amen. so that we can focus properly on, on the things God has called us to do. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 That was beautiful, Rev, uh, Reverend Edwards. And just to add, so it really just boils down to you and me. You, you, you. She said a choice. You have to choose. That's it. Choose. You choose, you choose, you choose, you choose. I didn't hear you. And me choose. Amen. 
Amen. Beautiful. Amen. Beautiful. Beautiful. So we're going to head to the summary um, so we can definitely get to the second set of scriptures. The second set of pages, I'm sorry. So in summary, uh, and these ladies have detailed these points out. My God. Their own perspectives, their own experiences, and from their own personal time with God. So I thank you, um, ladies. We come together and sharpen each other. We come together and strengthen each other. So your comments were um, like gold to my soul. So thank you for that. How does the author describe focus? And these are right from the book. And I put the pages, if you have the book, fervent. Focus clears away the clutter, hmm. captures the details, minimizes the distractions, lower the risk of being blindsided, protects your goals and your dreams. Amen. Text your goals and your dreams. This reminds me, there are some people that have very bottom line kind of characters, uh, character, and it, um, especially money people, finance people. Mm -hmm. Talking to somebody that deals with finance, they just like get to the point. Mm -hmm. All that other stuff you're telling me don't matter. How much money did you spend, Keith Oliver? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. All that stuff doesn't matter. How much money did you spend? We have to train our spirits. Spirit, get to the point. Stop looking at the drama. Get out of your feelings. Stop wasting time. Quit being pulled in 900 different directions because people want you. Stop trying to control things. Focus in. What's the bottom line? Amen. Amen. What causes our focus to be off? Page 24, uh, 42, she says, you just under, uh, underestimate the enemy's power. Mm -hmm. Back when I said there were years, I would look back and be like, once God changed my pers perspective or healed a wound in my heart, you look back and be like, oh my goodness, I, like, I can't believe that I live this segment of life. Yes. Mindset, just blind. Mm -hmm. Under estimate the enemy's cunning power yes, yes. just doing you and sister Shalita said that you look back and a lot of you was just selfishness mm -hmm. opening the door to the enemy because you satisfying yourself yes <laughs> getting robbed and don't even know it because it feels good oh Jesus <laughs> you on top full of pride full of ego doing your thing getting your groove back yeah. Cost you. Yeah. Okay. Side note: What causes our focus to be off? A little JMS side note: Unresolved issues in your soul. Mm. You can be so dead set, and we just talked about managing expectations for two months. You can be so dead set on a section in your life of either an expectation not being met, unforgiveness because you was hurt, people not being who you wanted them to be to you, unresolved issues, and you're stuck right there. Mm -hmm. You're never going to justify it. It'll never be exactly the way you want it, but you won't move on. Yeah. yeah. So the enemy can just keep you focused right in that season of your life. Okay? Um, control. Yeah. You, you, we had a lesson, I can't remember the name of it. You're going to be right or you're going to salvage the relationship. Sister Tennille said that. I'm either going to cherish the relationship or I'm going to always be right and have it my way and be all scattered and you do this and I'm going to miss the whole relationship and the enemy just sitting back smiling. Because mm -hmm. I'm going to come in and get your baby because you over here hollering about, I don't know, wash the clothes. That's right. That's right. Okay. So you're going to be right or you're going to maintain relationship. So control, emotional issues, lack of knowledge. Mm. That's why I say, um, just for my soul is coming to you. We can't get into the church. We have three opportunities to study. You have to increase your knowledge on the enemy's game. You got to increase your vision. You got to expand, you know, 
and, and, and quit thinking that this is an underestimating him. Because sometimes the enemy is the enemy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. The Amen. enemy is the enemy. Mm -hmm. You're going to keep your perspective. You're not going to see it God's way. you going to, you know, just pride, just ego, just yeah. stuck. Yeah. It's the enemy. It ain't even the real enemy. It's the enemy. Yeah. So, yep. Some of us, he ain't got to do much. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, we're talking about what we know. We ain't talking about what we read. We talk about what we know. Amen. Be true. Right. What are we doing if we're not focused on the real issue? On page 43, she says, wasting precious time and using the wrong weapons to fight. And Sister Tanil just tore that thing right up. Yeah, yeah. And the walk, she said, "You gonna use a weed eater to cut grass?" <laughs> yeah. Yes, she did. Oh my God! How many times has God said, Amen. "Shut your mouth and get on your face"? Amazing. Yep. Amazing. On your job, or in your families, or in relationships, He said, "Be quiet." Amen, Rev. Do how to fight? <laughs> no, they will hear my point. Amen, real. Amen. Amen. I'm a witness to getting yeah. off my face and situations and people changing, and you standing there like, yeah, yeah. I should have been doing that the whole time because I done wasted some good energy mm -hmm. trying to talk to you. Amen. Okay. Where is the real struggle, the real fight? And it's a little homework for you guys. Read the entire. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6 because she said it's not flesh and blood yeah, yeah. it's not flesh and blood mm -hmm. it's rulers of dark places it's those spiritual enemies that you can't see okay and I'm just going to make a note and a reference to it the last page um, the last paragraph on page 44 and she goes I'm not saying that every bad uncomfortable thing that enters our life is automatically oozy from the pit of hell I like that because she balances it out sometimes simply the nature of the world in which we live can bring tribulation out of the woodwork living in this world everyday life and sometimes the reap what you sow consequences of our own actions mm. put us in challenging all your was positions. The mm. Bible tells us that God is sovereign enough mm -hmm. to employ any uh, uh, device necessary to draw your hearts back to him. Okay. In other words, it ain't always the devil. No. Nope. Sometimes God lists your actions and consequences draw you back to him. That's right. Because he's he's then the only thing you got to focus on because you need his help. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful. Yes. Boy, I tell you, y'all is on fire this morning. Okay. 40 pages 45 through 49. Um first lady to name and minister. Jennifer Edwards, we got a couple of questions here that you guys said that you wanted to uh, address. What are the identified deeds of the enemy? What are the identified deeds? There are some strategies and tactics he have, and they don't change. He's been doing them since the beginning of time. Yeah. Number two, what spiritually approved weapons are assigned to the children of God. We got some spiritually approved weapons that take his head right off. Mm -hmm. Describe the victory we already have. And some of us are just plain old unaware, lack of knowledge yep. of what the Bible says that's already happened to the enemy. Mm -hmm. okay? He's already a lost cause. Mm -hmm. So, sister, my sisters, go forward. Go forward. Number one, what you got? Hey Amen. I see, um, I, when she says, he says, she says, what are the identified deeds of the enemy? 
And my sister so beautifully lays it out for us on page 45, where she says, the devil's deeds, however, are so unlike what, you know, like you said earlier, where God actually, when he does something, it's really to grow us up. Well, the enemy, what he's trying to do is cause discord. Mm -hmm. you know, he's a deceiver. You know, mm -hmm. smoke and mirror, he, he comes as an angel of light. And, and what I like, she puts, she puts here, she says, success to him means stirring up discord in your home. Mm -hmm. You know, you and your, your husband fight, you know, your church, you know, your workplace, you know, you, know, you your neighborhood, you know, just, and, it, and then I like how she says, doing it in such a way that no one's even aware he's been in the building. What you say? Right. No. And so in, in, the, in the earlier segment, like, like the lady said, a lot of times things have happened and after it, it has happened, we, when we sit back and reflect on it, Come on. Like, oh my God. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You know, I've seen, I can actually look back over things that happened in my life where things just got so out of hand. And when you pull back that curtain, it wasn't nobody but the enemy. You're like, how do I let him do this to me in my house? You and your husband, you tearing up everything with you and your husband. You know, your kids, y'all fighting. Mm -hmm. You know, just the enemy, I'm telling you, he, he definitely is. A, he, try, he is a big deceiver. Big yes. deceiver. So the thing that I, that I got out of the deeds is deception, discord, mm -hmm. trying to, you know, distort your perception of things. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Minister Jennifer. Question number one, any response on his deeds? You know, um, I am here, and again, here we go with the bubbles, but I'm going to get it together. Okay, so <laughs> she references 2 Corinthians 11 and 14, but Ephesians 5 and 11 also says, have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. And I don't know about you ladies, but I've noticed in our society, not in just young people, all people, I'm going to say that all age groups have had such a dismissive personality for one mm. reason or another. Yes. It's so unlike Christ, right? Uh, you go to the Taco Bell, the little teenagers at the windows are really not concerned about you. They're just trying mm. to get to the next person. We become mm. technical, task oriented. Um, and I don't know if it's just because we have a society where we teach people YOLO, you only live once, which is a lie, or we're, we're so big on affirmations and protecting our own selves and things like that, that we dismiss uh, the opportunity to, to love on, on other people. So our focus becomes on ourselves. Our focus in prayer becomes on us. Our focus becomes about our four walls. We don't care about our neighbors. We don't care about what's going on in somebody else's world because there's so much negativity out there. And so mm -hmm. the deeds of the enemy come into our own lives when we become dismissive. I kept hearing God say that we need to stop being dismissive as people of God. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where we're going with this. I don't know what, what we're going to do with this that I just said, but we can't be dismissive, mm -hmm. dismissive as, as people of God. Amen. You know, um, um, since it, that it happened earlier. Sister Shalita brought that out. First Lady said, caring about the people who the storm didn't hit, although it didn't hit us. Right. You know, it's that same, I, I see the same link and the same roots in y'all's conversation, um, not to be dismissive, but to, because you said when you're dismissive, it's like you're opening the door to the deeds of the enemy. Mm -hmm. and, and, right. and that's exactly what I heard in First Lady's comments. You know, not to be dismissive. You know, the storm missed your house, but who house did it hit? Can you give them something? Can you give them a call? Can they come stay with you for a while? Yeah. So, amen. Amen. What spirit and number one, number one, Sister Tanae said it was on 45, page 45. I want you to read that. I want you to read that. Because again, it shows you his deeds. And then you're going to be able to identify it in your life. Mm -hmm. Number two, what spiritually approved weapons are assigned mm. to child of God? What you got? Amen. She so beautifully lays this out. At the start at the bottom of page 46. Yes, she did. And then she goes on, you know, I'll just touch on the truth, you know, God's standard, you know, his right righteousness, you know, just right living. 
applying his truth, uh, peace. Yeah. You know? And I love the part in peace where she says, a it, peace, a sense of balance that's not subject to external circumstances. My God. My God. Because so yeah. many times you can have hell all around you. Come on, sis. Mm -hmm. so if you're on your knees and you're praying, God gives mm -hmm. you that peace that surpasses mm -hmm. all understanding. I love that. That's right. That's right. You know, just you know, putting our faith in our in the beliefs, salvation. You know that you can hang your hat right there. Yeah. And one thing that when I was doing my study, I was I was thinking about when I was reading through this, and I was like, you know, the body of faith, us as believers. We are on the devil's hit list. We are always, always under attack. Always under attack. And knowing this, we have to stay armed with these weapons that God has given us. Amen. Um, Thank you. Amen. We have to. Mm, mm, mm. Minister Jennifer? Question number two. I just don't know how much more needs to be said. She covered it all. <laughs> yes, she did. Um, I, I think that if Jesus himself had to use the sword of the spirit, he used his, he used himself, he used the word when he was in the wilderness to when the devil was trying to tempt him to, to you know, take the stones and turn them into bread. If he had to use his word himself against the enemy, how much more do we need the word in us as the sword of the spirit? When the enemy comes into our minds and tells us we're defeated and we're powerless, we need to have scripture waiting and ready to throw back at that enemy Amen. to defeat the very thought that comes into our minds. So I said it before, but I'm going to say it again. In a day and time, we have the Bible at the very whim of our fingertips. We know less word. I believe our ancestors who couldn't read and write had word inside of them. Yes. They had word inside yes, of them. So did. we need to teach our children. The yeah. importance of knowing God's word and applying it. Amen. 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 My God. My God. And for those of you who have the book, you you if you gotta put some bubble gum, I <laughs> need <laughs> oh, you. Amen. Oh, down. If you gotta use some chewing gum, I'm gonna need you to get these weapons down because Amen. not only do they work, they reap benefit. Yes. Not yeah. do they work, they reap results. Not do they work. Heaven is on your behalf when you use them. Nobody's on your side doing it your way. If anything, you're giving the enemy greater access. But when you go into truth and righteousness and peace, and when Sister Tanae, she stopped at peace. She didn't go into faith and salvation. The word of God, we just got real happy when she stopped at peace. <laughs> I thought about something she said, that inner sense of balance that's not subject to external circumstance. Yes. Exact opposite yes. of these deeds. Mm -hmm. That's the way you have to look at these weapons. If you yeah. look at these weapons, they are exactly what the enemy does not want for you. Amen. Amen. Okay. You look at the spiritual weapons, they are in exact opposite. Yeah. A complete yeah. dichotomy of what the enemy's deeds That's right. are trying to do in you. They don't want you to have any truth. They That's want you right, to have drama. That's right. That's right. right. That's right. He doesn't want you to be real with yourself and the truth about your decisions. Mm -hmm. Okay? He wants you to stay in a self gratifying and a self-justifying mindset. Mm -hmm. God deals with truth. Yeah, yeah. Righteousness. He wants you living below the mark. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. God says he's going to restore us and forgive us of all unrighteousness. The yeah. only we confess it. So he keeps you in unconfessed sin. That's right. Mm. He keeps you in unconfessed sin because if you confess it, the Lord said, I'll forgive you of all unrighteousness and put you back in line with my will for your life. So he keeps you justified in unrighteousness. Peace. He's everything but. Now, he's the author of false peace. Oh. 
Yes, he is. This prescription going to give me some peace. This wine going to give me some peace. This man peace in my life. If I go shopping, I'm going to be peaceful. If I smoke this, I'm going to be peaceful. If I just fall. My God. Yeah. It'll be a peace. Come on now. Yeah. We're gonna talk real. Let's talk real. Uh, false peace. Oh, God, Jesus. False peace. <laughs> false okay. Oh, it is not a sense of balance. Oh my God. Something happened and people get all over the place. That's the number one sign. Ain't no Holy Spirit in them. My God. Mm. They just they just be all over the place. You know, take them. Mm. Calm yourself down. Now you can cry if you hurt, but all oh. all this, all this, all this. She said a sense of balance that's not subject to external circumstances. What is faith? The enemy wants you faithless. You put your faith in God, he's coming after you. Because mm. he wants your faith in yourself. He wants your faith in your money. He wants your faith in your looks. He wants your faith in the world. Amen. Faith in your job. Right. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Salvation. Oh, we coming against everything to keep you, get you saved, keep you saved. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think I once shared this story with you guys that my baby boy shared with me about something he saw online where this man was on the fence. On one side, it was the uh, devil and the other side was God. And he says, you know, I kind of like this side over here of doing wrong, but I know God is right. I'm just going to stay right here on the fence. And, and, and God was saying, no, 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 come this way. And the enemy was saying, no, 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 come this way. So he said, after a while, God disappeared. And he turned around, sitting on the fence, and he looked at the enemy. He says, oh, I didn't tell you. I own the fence, too. Wow. <laughs> right there. I'm going to leave that right there. Oh, wow, wow. Jesus. He said, where did God go? He said, the enemy said, oh, I didn't tell you. I own the fence, too. <laughs> So you either saved or you're not, but there's nothing in between. Amen. Amen. Now, even as saved, don't let Reverend Oliver be so black and white. We grow. Yeah. We make mistakes, we grow. We sin, we confess. We don't stay stuck and live in unrepented sin. Amen. And there's a maturity and a sanctification and a process you go through to, to be deeper and greater and more intimate and more stronger in God. Yes. Yeah. But willingly just straddling the fence because you still want to do this and still want to do that, the enemy owns the fence too. Amen. Yes, he enemy, does. Make a decision and get in the fight. Let me think about that. Okay, everybody on here, this whole panel, all six of these beautiful queens, there's yeah. a daily fight. You yeah. up and you make, like Miss uh, uh, Minister Jennifer said, it's a daily choice. Yes. But it's not on the fence. <laughs> Yes. Of course, it's not on the fence. Not on the fence. No. And last, it says the word of God being a weapon. Mm. How often does he punk you out of the most powerful weapon you have? And that's the word. Amen. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, God. You look at truth, righteousness, peace, faith, salvation, and the word of God are your weapons. Now you think about how the enemy works against them. Yes. As, as I was reading, Reverend Oliver, funny you just mentioned that. I, you know, to be honest, some people don't really believe all the word. Yeah. That's it. And, you know, and that's where a lot of it, like, uh, I believe this part, but I don't really believe this part. Amen. And that's where we have a lot of. Like she said, the, your mind, your mind, your enemy, that's what he, 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 he puts these doubts of seed mm -hmm. in your mind. Mm -hmm. And like you said, you turn to other things, wine, whatever it is that you turn to, and you don't turn to God and activate prayer, which is your great weapon. Your great yeah. Oh, you turn to other religions, you turn to yeah. other mindsets, you start believing in dark forces. This yeah. world is a mess. It is. Yes. If I might be able to give y'all an example, um, you all know, the ladies know, my sister passed away almost a year ago from breast cancer. And I tell you toward the end, you can see the spiritual transitioning happening so keen. But the biggest thing for me that she left for us 
and she would recite over and over, no matter who she spoke to, I am strong in the Lord oh and in God. the power of his might, for the joy of the Lord is my strength. And that's part of Ephesians 6 and 10 and Nehemiah 8 and 10, strung together. And so from this point on, every time I speak to my mother, we have conversations, we end our conversations with, I am strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. For the joy of the Lord is my strength. When you are going through a situation, no matter what it is, speak the word of life Amen. in the world. Speak it because that is how you yield the sword. So whether it's one, two, or even three scriptures, learn those scriptures and know what scriptures to use for your situation. That is how you find yourself moving forward and not stuck Amen. in the situation. Amen. 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 Oh, y'all just you y'all just doing it this morning. Y'all just doing it this morning. Number three, describe the victory we already have. Describe the victory. First Lady today, Minister Edwards, describe the victory we already have. I mean, we are fighting. From victory and that's the key we're fighting from victory God has already defeated the enemy so we are you know if you and if you see on page 49 how she says and in prayer in Jesus with these weapons guess what you win mm -hmm. already won victory is already yours through Christ yes yeah. yeah. already defeated the enemy and so that's why the enemy is so upset with us because he's trying to get us to go away from God. But no, you, you devil, you've already been defeated. And so we have to remember that. A lot of times we, we forget that and we have to know that. He, yes, 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 yes. He went to the yes, cross. Yes. He went to the cross. I mean, in, 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 you know, in, in roles, I mean, he's God. already been defeated. Any dead situation can be resurrected through Christ Jesus. Hmm. So we have to remember that. You know, um, God is our great warrior. Yes, he is. Thank you, God. You know, and the enemy, he knows this. And so he tries everything he can through deception, you know, through changing your point of view on things, trying to keep right. up discord in our lives, you know, mm -hmm. everywhere. My but, and, you know, and that's the thing is if he can get us, like you can't, Deborah, you can't get me because I already know where my victory is. Oh, Jesus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's already won, and we just have to remember that. Awesome. Minister Edwards, what you got? Where Describe the victory we already have. As my sister stated with a beautiful um, analogy of her, her sister, and how at the end she was fighting and quoting scripture, as long as we remain in this fallen world, we're going to have struggles. Yes. But struggles to overcome. Remember we said for focus is a choice and uh, Reverend Oliver said it before that it's our tactic against the enemy to overcome. We are overcomers. Yeah. We are more than conquerors. You know, and at times we're going to fall, we're going to slip, we're going to make mistakes, but God gives us grace, the yes. merit, the favor, and the power to overcome. So as long as we know that in the, in the end we win, either way we win. You know how you play tic-tac-toe with a little kid and you, you put your ex in a certain spot that either, and, and, and you kind of double team them. So no matter what they put down, you win yeah. either way. Yeah. That's how it is when it's in this thing called life. Either way we win. Victory in Jesus is real. It's attainable. It's attainable. The devil is already defeated. We have to know that when we're going through tests and trials. And let me tell you, in this world, in this day and time, our faith is faltering because we want to know the, the God of victory, but we don't want to know the God that carries us through the valley experiences. Ooh, what you say? <laughs> what you say? Amen. We want to quote every scripture about us having the abundant life and being on top. But there are Come times on, Come on. that we have to go through the pressures of life, the pain of life, where God grooms us and grows us for his use. That's right. But then our faith falters because we don't know enough scripture or even enough uh parables in the bible to compare ourselves to because we can compare Amen. ourselves to a whole lot of people in the words right. so, victory is already won. either way ladies either way we win amen amen and things amen. of the enemy are temporary and with god is eternal life and that's yes. what because thank you god okay, yeah, if you thank go you, god. that way 
that's temporary. You not you don't have eternal life, which is what we have through our Father, our Heavenly Father. That's right. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Yes. yes, yes, yes. Thank you, God. And my sisters, they sum this up. Um, this section, pages forty-five through forty-nine excellently and before we look at these responses um sister thomas i see you you just cutting up online you have a church over in your house <laughs> god bless you you church in your house with your own self she didn't invite all her friends in the world go on girl i see you i see you sister lou yes yeah, sister rose sister cole come on now all right I just want to make mentions of your name and say hello to you this morning. I see you, Minister Fondal. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yeah. She make the best pound cakes on this side of the earth. <laughs> Fullerton, yes, 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 yes. I thought I saw another cousin of mine on here earlier, but just want to make mentions of your name. Yes, Kenneth Greer, God bless you all. Um, what are the identified deeds of the enemy? And pages 45 and 46, disguising himself as an angel of light. And I will be transparent. I have failed for that one many a time until I got strong enough to even ask God for discernment. To Amen. Which looks good. Amen. Amen, bro. Amen. Okay. And we fall for that one a lot of times in our immaturity in Christ. Yeah. Oh, that person's so nice. Oh, that situation was so perfect. Oh, that just must have came from heaven. You better ask God, show me what I'm really dealing with. I don't care how sweet it is. Uh -huh. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. Um, knowing your human responses. He knows you. He knows the areas of your weakness. Yes, it is one of his deeds to study you. To know if I just let the people say this, she going off. Yeah, yeah. If I just let the co-workers do this, she going to hit the roof and she going to shame Jesus all day long with her mouth. Mm -hmm. He knows you. So sometimes we have to watch our areas of brokenness, our areas of sensitivity, our areas of emotional triggers, and yeah. always be ready to jump. Yes. But to see it as a setup so the enemy can get you out of character. Right. Yes. Okay. So yes. knowing our human responses, he has that. He 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 has that on Caesar expert at that. That's right. Finger pointing. Finger pointing. Identify these of the enemy because of this person, because of this person, because my mama, because my daddy, because the dog, because of this, because of no. He'll keep you focused on all of that instead of looking in the mirror. Assigning blame, finger pointing, false ideologies of culture. Mm. False ideologies of the culture we live in. You can go into this world and find any gods you want. You can redefine and reassign all your identification, okay, physically and materialistically. You have all of the culture ideologies of being your own God. Amen. Amen. Your specific temptations, he got you on lock. He know what flavor chocolate you like. Okay? Your specific temptations, disharmony and dysfunction, these are the deeds of the enemy. Yeah. When yeah. we see them in our lives, we can stop falling for them because they're his little small traps. Number two, what um, spiritually approved, non-flesh, but spiritually approved weapons are assigned? And mm. they are, we talked about those in depth. These are our weapons. These, this is how we take his head off. But these are actually the things he tries his darndest to keep you from because he knows you will gain heaven's power. Come on. You fight the battle spiritually. Yes. For your flesh. Describe the victory we already have 
And that is on page 49, as Sister Tanae said. The enemy has been disarmed and embarrassed. Mm -hmm. Colossians 2.15. He has been overruled. Mm. 1, 20 and 22. He has been mastered. Mm -hmm. Philippians 2, 9 through 11. He has been rendered powerless. Mm -hmm. 2 and 14. All his hard work has been destroyed. Destroy. First John three and eight. Amen. Sometimes you have to walk through your house and declare that. Sometimes you have to remind yourself of that and set things back in order because everything he's trying has already been overthrown. God says, "Be of good cheer." In John sixteen and thirty three, for I have overcome the world. Everything we go through in this world. Our father says, be of good cheer, baby. I done already overcame it. Amen. Yes, Amen. he did. I, 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 I'm sitting in, in heaven, the right hand of the father, just waiting on you. Yes, he did. Now, how are you going to get through it? Smiling or with your tongue hanging out? That's right. That's right. So those are the victory points that we already have. We have to fight from those positions, not from a position of being defeated. That's right. Amen. Amen. And in your books on pages 50, actually it starts at the bottom of 49, but all the way from 50 to 54, our sister Priscilla Schreier goes into what the call of prayer is about reestablishing focus what specific scriptures that you can pray that you can declare that you can speak or you can read because you didn't even know that that type of power existed to help you regain focus i see here in some of your um precious comments god help me father thank you god show me father help me lord i've been doing this the wrong way Okay, so what you do, if you don't have a copy of this book, get in touch with me somehow. But it gives you on page 51, 52, and the beginning of 53, exactly what you do when you call on his help. Exactly what to do. In prayer, the acronym praise, repentance, ask, and repeat his yes. Repeat his promise. Praise thanksgiving what he has done mm. gratitude for who he is repentance go ahead and realign yourself with god go ahead you can be transparent you can't i don't want to know your business but you can tell him everything if he's put on your heart that's wrong it's wrong yeah 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 Father, forgive me. Father, help me because I can't do it by myself. And then realigns, it realigns yourself and transforms your heart. Mm -hmm. Transparent and true. Ask. Specifically ask. I see your beautiful comments. Father, help me. God, refocus me. You ask him. Right. Write down the details of your issues. Father, my control keeps me from focusing on you. Father, the oh, kingdom of this world keeps me from focusing on you. Father, the distractions of me trying to uh, chase these kids around or, or chase this man around, it's keeping me from focusing on you. Father, I got too many other idols in my life. Come get them. That's you asking him and being transparent about the help you need and the yes. You are praying his promise. What has God already said yes to? Pages of his yes, of his word. Pages. I will exalt you. Lord, for you rescued me. You, re you refused to let my enemies triumph over me. Did you know God's word says that about you? Hallelujah. Speak it over yourself. That was Psalms 30, verse 1. So Priscilla breaks out focus scriptures for you on those pages. And I will just read to you as we get ready to close and thank our, uh-oh, I don't want to do that. I'll go back. 
the prayer, because at the back of the book, she has these little cards for you to script your own personal prayers according to how the scripture um, speaks to your heart. And this is the one that I wrote and I share with you on the screen there. Father, I am so thankful for your faithfulness shown towards me. Left that out, sorry. Shown towards me. You are my creator and the lover of my soul. Mm -hmm. That's praise. Here's the repentance. Please forgive me for the spirit of control and self-dependence. Here's me asking Now help me make it my priority to use my spiritual armor, spiritual weapons. Show me the open doors the enemy uses in my life. Because you know what, brothers and sisters? You might not be able to see them. That's right. Father, show me the doors he's using in my life. And here's the yes. I ask you to restore my mindset to pray and allow your victory to take over my battles. You promise to fight my battles and be my protector. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Drux these cards in such a way that they tear out. And you could do a prayer on passion, which was chapter one. You could write you a prayer about focus. And she wants you to take those cards and put them up in your bathroom mirror. Put them by your bed, stick them on your steering wheel, wherever you got to put them so you can pray that first strategy, passion. The second strategy, we're now studying focus. But you make that prayer personal to you. And in closing, in closing, oh my God, I want to thank you, ladies. You have blessed me today. Amen. Bless me today. Awesome panel members. My sister Tanae and Linda and Tanil and Shalita and Jennifer, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Not only are you my sisters in Christ, you my sisters. (laughs) You my sisters and my sisters in Christ. So I have had an awesome conversation and I know I know that you have blessed um, many, many souls. And if you guys are up for it, First Lady should lead us Cyprians tomorrow. They are having their annual Mission Society Day. It will be on their website, Clear Lake AME, on their Facebook page, Clear Lake AME Church. And it's going to be at 11 o'clock. Is that right, Sister Shalita? That is right. It's our yes. Women's yes. Missionary Sunday. Women's Missionary Sunday, Clear Lake AME Church at 11 o'clock tomorrow. So join in and be blessed. It is going to be awesome, awesome, awesome. And as always, as always, I want you to remember all you beautiful souls that's joined us today and all of those who are joining us that may not have said anything and I don't see your beautiful names. um, Know that we love you. Know that we are praying for you. Always remember, God is truly the lover of your soul. And our next book study, um, chapter three and chapter four, if God says the same um, and nothing else um, happens, and I'll be sending Facebook posts, those will be the dates. Those will be the dates. So thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you. God bless the panel guests. I love you, sisters. Y'all have an awesome, awesome, and wonderful day. Amen. 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 For now. Love everybody. (laughs) God bless y'all. Yes, those beautiful faces.